that's intimidatingly close to my face. Welcome to my um, absolutely abysmal YouTube vlog setup. Got a bit of coffee in my mouth. It was meant to be a lockdown uh, quarantine 10 meter walks video. Great. Great. And we're back on. At the start of lockdown, uh, when all of this kicked off, I thought it would be a great idea to do a 10 meter walk in quarantine in my house. Unfortunately, I got rather busy and I've been doing bits and bobs, but here we are. It is towards the end of lockdown now and I thought I better do this before officially we are sort of back to normal. Not that that's ever going to happen again. But uh, I figured I would show you some of the things I can film around the house. I've got a different lens that I sort of want to have a play around with, see if we can get some slightly more interesting shots. Oh, I could also have a look at my aquarium. Mm. I'm on the third floor. Of, it's sort of in the roof of, a, of an old building and um, all that I have in, rather than a garden, garden is one little ledge and then a roof. So my 10 meter walk is going to be from the edge of the kitchen counter out the window and onto the old roof and there is honestly nothing. So I mean there's some moss that I can see. So it's going to be a really probably the hardest 10 meter walk I've done in terms of getting any wildlife content. I might get um, a little bit of help from a friend because maybe it would also be nice to see a 10 meter walk from somebody who does have a garden. Hold on a minute. Yo! Matthew, I have a proposition for you. Yes? Basically, you know how I uh, don't have a garden? Well, how do you fancy doing a 10 meter walk in your garden to slot into my episode? Because at the moment, I'm going to be doing it on my roof, which I still do, but it would just be lovely to compare with somebody who actually has something living in their surroundings. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I get the honor of being in a 10 meter walks video. Well, you've been in the first one, so... Yeah, man, yeah, I'll be well for it. think that's an honour? <laughs> it's an absolute honour. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So you just, you, you draw basically a 10 metre line. Mm -hmm. um, so just like standard breadth of lenses. Yeah, then you've got an hour and basically you just have to make a short film of, of, of whatever. Like, I sort of make them wildlife related, but it's like... I imagine with your lawn, you probably can. I don't know what you describe it as, but it's not a lawn. <laughs> Well, if it's, if it's a bit more overgrown than a lawn, then you're probably in luck in terms of wildlife. It's going to oh, be yeah. really good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll let you get on with doing that, uh, and I will get on to recording the rest of my episode and doing my walk, and then I'll put yours in the video if you send it over to me when it's done. Sick. I'm on it. Awesome. All right. Sweet. Talk soon. Speed later, man. Bye. Okay, so as I said, I've got quite a lot of house plants in the house. You can see a few down there. We've got this little um, whole load of them up here and in all the other rooms as well. So I've got this lens, let me just find it. This lens here. This is a Panasonic 50mm um, Prime. So it gets some really nice bokeh shots. Get some lovely light with this lens. Uh, it can go really wide open. I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm going to have any particular narrative, I just want to sort of explore what this lens can do in terms of beauty shots. So I'm going to give that a little go, and then, once I've done that, um, I might chuck the GoPro in the fish tank, see what we can do. I might just get out on the roof and do a 10 meter walk on there. Just have a look.
Ooh, the, because the light's really going down now, I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna do my walk, walk or climb. Um, so out here is the roof and we've got pretty much a sheer drop to the right. Uh, and then on the left, which is luckily where the light is tonight, um, there's a wall stopping me. So that's where I'll be spending most of my time. I'll just get out and show you that. So we're gonna climb over here. Through we go. All right. Oh, there goes a pigeon, scared that off already. So we've got everything out here waiting for us. Um, and as you can see, there's uh, the lights going down and there's lots and lots of houses, so not much wildlife. Oh, we got a pigeon. And that's about it. So it's gonna be quite tricky to um, successfully film this one, I think. It's gonna be a big challenge. We're gonna see what we can do. So I'm gonna start the timer and we're gonna go for it. I reckon I've got an hour and that's probably how much light I've got left. So let's get cracking. Let's go. Okay, get that going. So, we're inception. Go. What do we start with? Maybe some macro. Let's see. How sturdy are these tiles? Do not try this at home. Ironically, I don't know how strong this is. I need to be super careful not to drop any of this stuff. About halfway through and there's, uh, I mean, literally barely anything to film. Oh, what the heck is that? That's some juvenile seagulls. So there is some stuff coming in now, so I'm, I'm gonna get back to it, but whoa, don't want that wind to blow my camera off. Oh, I better saw that. That is time. Wow. And the sun is just setting. Well, that really was one of the hardest ones I've ever done. It is more like three meters, but I allowed myself to sort of go down the roof and all around where I could because there wasn't many places I could actually access. Very, very limited for stuff that time. It feels like the most difficult, but actually I think I've picked up the most new techniques during that. I was starting to do a lot more inventive stuff. I started using the reflections and stuff, like really trying to maximize the most of everything that was here. I did actually see a jay flew past me, sat down in the trees, but I couldn't see it again. And at that point, I, you know, it wasn't a wildlife video anymore because there just wasn't enough. The vibe I might try and go for is like a memory book kind of style. So there's actually a videographer who I quite like called Matty Brown. He does lots of stuff on memories and very inventive camera techniques. And one of the things is he actually takes his hand and he covers the lens. So he's like looking through his fingers. And I did that at the end and wish I'd done it a bit earlier on actually. It's difficult. It, it, it took me about half the thing to realize I wasn't going to get the wildlife stuff that I wanted to make a wildlife video. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out. It's going to be a challenging edit as well. But I'm glad I did it because I think I've learned some new stuff and that's what this is all about. So we're now going to have a look at Matt's video. I had a concrete roof with clay slabs and um, the odd pigeon on a chimney. Uh, and Matt has had his wonderful lawn, which I normally dislike lawns, but now it seems like a nature haven compared to what I've just been in. So let's flip over now and see what Matt has managed to create from his 10 meter walk. So I hope you enjoy that. And after that, we'll go straight into my video. So I will see you next time. Sit, I'm on it. So here it is, my very overgrown and very urban, as you can probably hear, front garden. Matt sent me the challenge of doing a film within the time frame of just one hour and in a 10 metre stretch within this garden. I'm going to stick to a path that's been made by foxes that stretches right the way around the garden, that's around 10 metres. It's very hot today, so it's going to be quite a challenge because we bricks really don't cope well with the heat. But there's plenty of life going on in there, so there should be something that I can film that's hopefully at least slightly interesting to those watching. It'll be an interesting comparison with Matt at the end of all this as well. Guess there's nothing left but to get into it. Right, I don't know if you can see this, but I have one hour starting. Now. 
I don't know what to do. That's it. Challenge complete. I'm gonna go have a lie down and recover from some mild heat stroke. And then hopefully get something decent put together, but that was really hard. <laughs> that was really tricky. Oh, can't wait to see what you've got, Matt. Oh. For many people living a fast-paced city life, the concrete jungle can often seem very barren when it comes to biodiversity. However, if you take time to slow things down and look closely once in a while, the things you start to see may be rather surprising. So next time you walk past even the smallest overgrown green spaces, perhaps take a moment to sit and watch, you never know what you might find. It, but I'm hoping we haven't scared it. <laughs> yeah, I think let's just hang about for a moment. Life can, can live and exist in even the most urban environments, but it's very hot. 